Malcolm X was born on May 19, 1925, in Omaha, Nebraska, born as Malcolm Little. His parents, Louise and Earl Little, had eight children. Earl was a civil rights activist, and his life was threatened several times by the Black Legion. In 1929, Malcolm's house caught fire, but not that much. Two years later, Earl was found dead across the trolley tracks. Following his death, Louis suffered an emotional breakdown and was sent to a mental institution, while Malcolm and his siblings were sent to foster homes and orphanages. Eventually, Malcolm moved back to Boston. In 1946, Malcolm was sentenced to 10 years in Massachusetts State Prison. On burglary charges, after seven years serving in prison, Malcolm was granted parole in 1952. After getting out of prison, Malcolm began to study the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. Muhammad taught that white people kept African Americans from achieving political and economical success. Malcolm was a devoted follower and changed his name to Malcolm X. Malcolm believed the name Little was a slave name, so he changed his name to Malcolm X to signify his ancestors. Later, he was appointed as a minister for the Nation of Islam. Malcolm used newspapers and the radio to spread his beliefs. By 1963, Malcolm was credited with increasing the membership of NOI to 30,000 people. Malcolm was then featured in a week-long television special with Mike Wallace. In 1959, after the special, Malcolm was uncomfortable with the fact that his fame eclipsed that of his mentor, Elijah Muhammad. Malcolm's vivid personality caught the government's attention. The FBI infiltrated the organization and secretly placed bugs, wiretaps, and other surveillance equipment to monitor the group's activities. The FBI found out that Elijah Muhammad had an affair with at least six women within the NOI. This dealt a heavy blow to the civil rights movement. Hey, can you cover up the affair and the children? Hmm, no. In 1964, Malcolm left the NOI after being silenced for 90 days by Muhammad. Malcolm decided to found his own religious organization, the Muslim Mosque. That same year, Malcolm journeyed to Mecca. On this journey, Malcolm shared his beliefs with several other cultures. After this journey, Malcolm returned to the United States. However, this time instead of just preaching to the African Americans, he had a message for everyone. FBI informants discovered that Elijah Muhammad had Malcolm X marked for an assassination. One undercover agent was even tasked by the NOI to plant a bomb in Malcolm's car. After several attempts at his life, Malcolm traveled everywhere with bodyguards. On February 14, 1965, Malcolm's home was firebombed. Luckily, his whole family escaped. One week later, however, at a speech in Manhattan, three gunmen rushed Malcolm on stage and shot him 15 times at point-blank range. Malcolm was rushed to the hospital, however, he was pronounced dead upon arrival. 1,500 people attended Malcolm's funeral in Harlem on February 27, 1965. Malcolm's assassins, Talmadge Hayer, Norman Butler, and Thomas Johnson were convicted of first-degree murder on March 1966. All three men were members of the NOI. Martin Luther King Jr. was originally named Michael King Jr. and was born on January 15, 1929. He was the middle child of Michael King Sr. and Alberta Williams King. His father, Michael King Sr., became a pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church upon the death of his father-in-law. 
Michael King Sr. adopted the name Martin Luther King Sr. in honor of the German Protestant religious leader Martin Luther. Michael Jr. would adopt the name as well and become Martin Luther King Jr. In May 1941, Martin Luther King Jr. was 12 years old when his grandmother Jenny died of a heart attack. He took the death very seriously because he was out watching a parade when his grandmother died even though his parents told him not to go. Because of this, Martin Jr. jumped from a second story window at his family's house allegedly attempting suicide. Soon after, he attended Booker T. Washington High School where he skipped 9th and 11th grade and went to Moore House College in Atlanta when he was only 15 years old. He was unmotivated for the first two years of college. He questioned religion and felt uncomfortable with it, and initially decided not to become a pastor. During his third year at college, he came back to religion and went to Liberal Crozer Theological Seminary in Chester, Pennsylvania to become a pastor. During his last year at the college, Morehouse President Benjamin E. Mays influenced King's spiritual development. Mays was an outspoken advocate for racial equality. During his schooling, he met Coretta Scott and got married on June 18, 1953. After, he became a pastor at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church at the age of 25. On December 1, 1955, Rosa Parks was arrested and Martin Luther King Jr went and met with Ed Nixon, head of the NAACP chapter, and other civil rights leaders on the same night she got arrested to plan a citywide bus boycott. King was elected to lead the boycott because he was young, well-trained, with solid family connection, had professional standing, and was new to the community and had few enemies. So they felt he would have a strong credibility with the black community. In his first speech as the group's president, King declared, We have no alternative but to protest. For many years, we have shown an amazing patience. We have sometimes given our white brothers the feeling that we liked the way we were being treated. But we come here tonight to be saved from that patience that makes us patient with anything less than freedom and justice. The bus boycott would be 382 days of walking to work, harassment, violence, and intimidation for the Montgomery African American community. Those who could not walk to work were driven by anyone who owned a car. Both King and Ed Nixon's homes were attacked, sometimes with bombs, sometimes with gunfire. The African American community also took legal action against the city ordinance, arguing that it was unconstitutional based on the Supreme Court's separate is never equal decision in Brown v. Education. After being defeated in several lower courts rulings and suffering large financial losses, the city of Montgomery lifted the law mandating segregated public transportation.